seen it, tried it, I'd die for you on my terms when I get my lessons. Learn apples, cherries, pain, freeze it, breathe out pain. No, 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 the cane still maintain my grace. How come the more you have, the more that people want from you? More you burn away, the more that people earn from you. More you pull away, the more that they depend on you. I never seen a hero like me in a sci fi. So I wonder if you need to even meant for me. I wonder if you think that I can ever raise you up. I wonder if you think that I can ever help you fly. Never seen a hero like me in a sci fi. But I'd save a life if I thought it belonged to you. Mary Magdalene would never let her loved ones die.
So it's BBC Radio 1. I'm here down at the Maida Vale Studios uh, for a really special occasion. We are joined by FKA Twigs. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm really good. Thank you for being here. Full, amazing production. And I have to start with that, the kind of vision for this show. Well, I think obviously like Maida Vale is such a legendary um, location, but I've been working very closely with Theo Adams and we're very much obsessed with creating a very intimate setting mm. and creating um, just that sort of feeling of high low you know so it's really nice to start in a very intimate um living room and then to open up and you then see that we're actually in the incredible legendary space yeah yeah and then you're all wearing the most incredible costumes as well Mm. I have to say I'm insanely underdressed for this occasion (laughs) but yeah I mean the, the outfit is incredible it's art it's fabulous thank you um so the album's coming out on Friday um Magdalene your second album how are you feeling about the oncoming release date oh, i'm very very grateful and um i think it's just a huge sense of relief and pride to have music in the world and um i love playing shows and being with people that enjoy my music and that's the greatest reward really yeah. it's just being able to sing and perform for people and then you know get opportunities to do things like this today which you know obviously there's making the album and that's a whole thing in itself but after you get all these incredible opportunities to to come and create little like vignettes of magic you know and you know that's also a very very exciting part of making an album as well so yeah I'm living my dream at the moment. You were talking about the idea of performing the, the the album live and I wanted to ask you about that because you're about just about to go on a big old tour right? Yes I think I'm I'm starting in a week. 
How um, are you, I mean, you do so many, you are kind of in control of so many aspects of what you do from directing to producing mm. to songwriting. How does kind of performance come in, in that? Do you relish that side of it? Yeah, of course I do. I mean, I, I love performing and um, it's something that I've been doing for a long time. I think for me, the biggest, I don't want to say challenge, but but a, a part of the jigsaw that's come into place on this album, Magdalene, is just working out how I can bring my toolbox into, um, ask, yeah. yeah, like my artistry in a natural way that doesn't feel um, forced. And I think it's interesting because, you know, to be able to show different sides of myself as a mover or as a singer, be able to start writing for my voice more, mm -hmm. um, to be able to, you know, have movement that feels original to to myself and to my amazing dancers and creatives I have around me. It's it's just all a process. And, and I feel that during the Magdalene experience for me, I've just grown a lot. And I feel that it's the beginning now mm. in a way, like even though LP1 was really special, I, I called it LP1 because I wasn't sure if it should have a title. And this is my first titled album. Mm. Um, and that feels really poignant for me. Mm. Like I, in a way, I feel like it, it's starting again now. And the title, Magdalene, mm -hmm. what is your relationship with the woman behind that name? Um, well, Magdalene is somebody that I was very um, obsessed with even as a child. Um, I think we've spoken about this mm. a little bit before, but just the idea that um, in the Bible she was somebody that was painted as a prostitute, somebody that was painted as a woman that had to have all of these demons exercised from her. But in actual fact, she was an incredible healer and mystic and she worked with herbs and oils and in many ways she was uh, a doctor. You know, what we now call a doctor in terms of using different skills to heal people. And her story is still um, a bit of a mystery, but one thing that is for certain is, is she was not a prostitute or a woman that had to have lots of uh, sins <laughs> expelled from her. Um, so I think just the idea of being able to, you know, getting in contact with her and um, explore the two sides of what it is to be a woman. I've spoken about this, but the the virgin and the whore and how Magdalene to me represents both of those things as an archetype. And as a woman, I believe that I can be innocent and pure and fresh. And I can also be dangerous and all knowing and seductive and powerful. And these things can happen at the same time in modern day society. Women are often put in a position where we have to choose one. And that's a shame, you know, yeah. we're the most powerful when we can be both. Right, home with you, um, there's a line that really stands out for me in there and it kind of alludes to what you were talking about earlier, which is the line, I'm probably going to get it wrong now, but uh, I've never seen a hero like me in a sci-fi. Is that it? No, did I get it wrong? Yeah. Um, can you talk me through that line, please, and, and kind of what compelled you to write those words? Hmm, well, you know, I, I haven't. Um, it goes back to a conversation that I think is ongoing in a lot of my work, which is this sort of, um balance between strength and vulnerability mm. it's something that like has followed me from the very beginning and it's not something that I necessarily think about but I think it's like you know it's becoming like apparent especially as I get older and I get to know myself that um you know like it's okay not to feel amazing all the time and and it's okay for me like as a woman of color not to feel like a Nubian queen all the time who's like perfectly sitting on my throne of greatness you know it's just not my reality but yeah I know that I'm still perfect the way that I am and I know that I still can do whatever I want and I can dream big and I can achieve my dreams and that has um nothing to do with my completeness mm. in the moment and I think that's what I mean by I've never seen a hero like me in a sci-fi like I haven't and now in this age where we're obsessed with superheroes and all these huge franchises making these amazing big films um you know but especially from a female point of view I'm yet to see like a female character who is beautifully strong and perfect and flawed and is a full range mm -hmm. and I think even um you know our sort of 
idea of what a pop star is or idea of what a female icon is, is is often very complete. I grew up with like these amazing women standing there in a sparkly outfit with like hair blowing in a wind machine and, you know, like fist pumping in this moment where they appear on stage and that's amazing and it's so valid. But um, that's just not how I am. And I think when I started to make my own music, I always vowed to that I would be um, as truthful as I could be. And and my truth is that, you know, I'm quite shy and quite reserved and, mm. you know, maybe people have called me like awkward and mm. stuff and that's okay. I, I still have, I can still can have my place on the big stage, you know? Yeah, yeah. And equally, the idea of you being an artist that, has never existed before you know I think with you and that you're completely unique so you've had to kind of carve out this identity for yourself as an artist as well as a as a woman have you found that difficult mm. I mean you've always had such a strong sense of who you are oh, but am. in terms of people no because I feel no I, I actually haven't found it difficult once I like had a taste for it myself yeah. I found it easy but that's because I'm incredibly lucky and have like the best creative team around okay. me who support me in my vision and if I say let's go down this direction you know they'll follow me and show me things and inspire me and we inspire each other and anyone like who makes me feel insecure for what yeah. I want to do like I just like I don't choose to be around them in like mm. a work sense I think it's really important to be challenged and have people like give you no ideas but you know if somebody said oh I like had to wear something or that mm. I should do a video like this I probably like wouldn't be around them <laughs> and I guess fired <laughs> <laughs> and I guess <laughs> I guess um you know that's one of the pluses of being signed to an indie label like Young Turks mm. it's like kind of just let me do yeah. what I want to do. And I have a wonderful manager who I've been working with since I was 19, mm. you know, so we're over like 10 years now into our relationship. And, you know, Matthew Josephs, who I work with very closely, we've known each other for a decade. Mm. So it just becomes very natural, even things like today. Mm. You know, we all just concentrate on our elements and have a conversation and then we turn up and make it happen and try and do it in the kindest calmest way possible <laughs> such a great situation that isn't it because yeah, it's just I'm the art lucky. leading that that's the the most important thing is that yeah. Aspect, yeah I think as an artist it's important to know who and what your medicine is yeah. and you know you have to take your medicine every day it keeps you well mm. so for me when I'm around people that I've known for a long time I'm around friends I'm around people that we've all genuinely come out of the same scene yeah it keeps me well yeah what cover version have you chosen to sing and why please um, I decided to sing Summertime because it's a song that um, my mom and my dad loved to hear me sing when I was um, a child. And um, a lot of people don't know, but I've spent a lot of time singing with jazz bands um, in cabaret clubs. In I've been singing when I started singing with a jazz band when I was 13 years old. And um, I just wanted to do something for my mum and for my dad to kind of give a nod to them and just the support that they've given me. And um, I don't know, they always say they want to hear me sing a jazz song. So I did it. <laughs> okay, love it. Thank you so much.